Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, a man back from injury. Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers take on Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First open way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. This was the scene a moment ago as the Bears emerged from their tunnel. Ready for football are they, and ready for football are we as the Bears get set to match up with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Bears team entering play. They come in off a loss last time out, but they're still in the midst of a good stretch here. Winners of seven of their last nine games. Meanwhile, for the visiting Packers, they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. In the offense last week, they had things humming. If you're a defensive player, you may get overshadowed a little bit, but you're really buoyed by what your offense is doing. It's the final three weeks of the season. Still plenty to play for here as we're underway in week 15. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their 6'2 QB out of North Carolina. Former number two overall pick, it's Mitchell Trubisky. And the numbers were not pretty. I mean, they don't look right. When you throw two interceptions, no touchdown passes, there's no way to really make that work. But I thought there were a lot of positives in watching his game tape. I think he's close to putting on a good performance. Let's see if he can flip those numbers around in this game. And, of course, rally his team to a win. Here's carry number one for Jordan Howard. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. On second down, Trubisky. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the Michigan man, Jake Ryan. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. And the defense could not have written a much better script than that first drive, pick six. The offense never got a chance to really get oiled up there, did they? But the defense, they certainly got in gear. What a big-time play and a great way for them to start. And now the offense, they've got to turn things around and figure this out because your backs are on the ground real quickly. Yeah, usually when you're starting the game getting the ball, 0-0 is the only score you're worried about. Now the second time you get it, you're already down a touchdown. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. Crosby with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense making their way out as we give you a look at the playoff race in the NFC. And it's right about this time of year you start to say this is when the cream rises to the top. Week 15, three weeks left to go, but still plenty to be determined. And I think for most teams, the obvious is to try and be the number one or number two seed. But when you look at it across the league and in throughout the history of trying to get to the Super Bowl, the teams you really fear are the ones that get hot and sometimes sneak in at a five or a six seed because we've seen those teams actually get to the Super Bowl and occasionally win it. Yeah, you think of the Giants a couple of times. Steelers have done it. You're right. It has happened and will happen more in the future, I'm sure. I know a lot of times we like to put players in certain boxes. He does this and he does that. But this guy, he can do a little bit of everything. He's not just a lead blocker or a guy who protects the passer. Handing the ball, he might want to get out of the way. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. 
Now a play fake here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The six-time Pro Bowler, Clay Matthews. And it'll be a second and long. Hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. it all back at once but you figure they're going to need something here 17 yards to go on second down they run play action for Howard now Trubisky looks for White but it's intercepted picked up by the rookie corner Jair Alexander and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36 yard line he's had it again Charles he had the pick six last week not a pick six here, but an interception. It's another Oski, because that's the word we use when we intercept the pass. Oski tells your team to rally around and block for you. Well, that worked really well last week because he had made it all the way to the end zone. This week, he got the Oski, maybe not a touchdown, but boy, he's playing really well. Now come the Packers for their next drive as we take a look at the playoff race in the NFC coming into the weekend. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their 36-yard line. The first carry here for Ty Montgomery. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading the play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. On second down, Montgomery looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. A quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're firing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Packers. Jimmy Graham, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Packers add six to their lead. Well, they had gone run the previous play. Nice little setup. This time they go play action. Defense bites a bit, and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran at the previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is, your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear Coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving, and he went on past them and caught the pass for a touchdown. So they only needed three plays on that drive, and it ends with a Packers touchdown. Crosby on now to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense making their way out as we give you a look at the playoff race in the NFC. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. We'll take a look at the starters here defensively for the Packers. They played extremely well last week in the win over Atlanta. And I'm eager to see the game plan and trying to attack them this week because when you take it away four times through interceptions, do you now decide that I can't throw the ball against this team and try and run it like crazy? Or do you challenge it? This is going to be fun. This is Howard on second down. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. 
And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. Josh Jones in on the stop. A good solid game there on first down, but the defense has to be happy. They didn't let it pop for anything bigger. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. And you're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And there was absolutely zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, and he has all the time in the world to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Hey, 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 hey. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Tackle there by Clay Matthews. Now that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. Watching that run takes me back to something a famous old coach once said. Any player he wants on his team, he wants him to be agile, mobile, and most definitely hostile. scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. We got three, we got up. On 80. Delay of game, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. They go play action here on first down. And that'll be incomplete. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Play action. It's Trubisky. Going to let one fly for one. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Allen Robinson. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bears have cut it to within a score. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, Back man. Yard. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. Parkey adds the extra point, And that'll make our score 14-7. to So that drive, 80 yards, 9 plays. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. 
And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. To throw is Rodgers. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play. Rodgers hands to Montgomery, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. Rodgers now to throw. Going for the deep ball. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. He had a little bit of the turnover bug last week. Three interceptions. Not an absolute disaster, but another one here. Do you start to get a little worried? You worry about your team as a whole because you have to find a way to make those interceptions quote-unquote go away. And that means your defense. They've got to go out there on sudden change and at least hold people to field goals. And if that keeps happening, they lose confidence in the quarterback and then no one plays well. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about it. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Kenny Clark in there to get him, and that's sack number six for him on the year. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. They'll try and run with their fullback. Gets around him. Oh, and now he, he's got a convoy, and he might be gone. He's at the 40, 20, 10, touchdown, Chicago. A big play there, 96 yards. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. Well, that one's hard to believe. Not something you see every day, a very long run for the big guy. Normally we see his counterpart, right? The scat back, the guy with the so-called speed. But we saw a little bit of everything there, didn't we? The big, powerful man with the football. He can also stretch it out a little bit in the open field. Now Parkey for the extra point. Parkey with the extra point, and we are tied at 14. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Jackson now to return. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. The numbers on the ground for Montgomery in last week's affair. 
10 carries, 54 yards, and a touchdown. They look like a team that really emphasized the running game in the offseason. They were going to build around it. Didn't matter they are going to run gap scheme, power scheme, whatever. They've got a runner who finds yardage if you give him just a little bit of space. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And the trick play doesn't work. Good reaction there defensively. And it'll be fourth down. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. On the give, this is their fullback. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And there's the pickup you want on first down. All offenses say, you get me four on first down, we'll take it. How about if you get five? They'll really be happy. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. formation here defensively. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And they'll mark him down right around the nine, just shy of the ten. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, the game the underneath stuff, you got to go and make the tackle right away. So one quarter in the books on a cold December afternoon. 14 apiece is the score. And we're back to Soldier Field after this. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. They take over first and 10 up near midfield. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down, here's Rodgers. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Danny Trevathan, and his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. That pick is ninth on the season. Remember when you were kids and you were playing Little League Baseball, and they penciled you in in the nine spot in the order? That wasn't so good, was it? Were you in the nine hole? Or, or you played the nine position right field? That wasn't so great. That wasn't good. You're picking dandelions out exactly. there. Exactly. Right? But the nine picks, nine you picks, won. you want that in a big way. That's, That's a great season. Heck of a season. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. 
One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. Trubisky now off the bootleg. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Nick Perry in there to sack him. And that is 10 for him now on the year. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Let's see what they draw up here. Third and long following the sack of Trubisky. They snap it at one. Now it's Trubisky. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Josh Jones. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore first how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Rodgers now on first down. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To throw, it's Rodgers. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. Great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And Rodgers intercepted a third time. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season... Because well, here we are in December, giving. right? It is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. Well, now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking... My replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. And they'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Again on second and ten, it's Trubisky. Over the middle complete. That's Robinson. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. The Bears on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. 
From the shotgun is Trubisky. Finding Gabriel complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Trubisky to Gabriel there for a Bears first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Trubisky now 6 of 10 in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. Trubisky with a give to Howard. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. A first and ten at the 38. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Robinson. That throw good for four. It's second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. All right. All right. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. They've definitely established a rhythm on this drive, moving the ball quite well. And big man with football is an integral part of the whole thing. Down they run with Howard. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And now Jordan Howard slow to get to his feet, so they will stop play here. We'll check on his status when we get back. for their fullback. Kevin King coming up from the secondary to make the play. The Bears on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by the Michigan man, Jake Ryan. He's at the 30, the 20. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Crosby for the point after. Crosby connects on the extra point, and the lead is now 21 14. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. On the return, it's Tariq Cohen. 
And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Now Trubisky to throw on second. Going to let one fly for Robinson. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Josh Jackson. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. The interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran a wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing them. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On first down, Rodgers caught by Cobb. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. a second and two after that last catch good for eight yards now Rodgers and incomplete not sure what you're thinking here partner but I believe the officials have done a nice job here getting together and then coming out and indicating that there was a receiver in the area. Absolutely, and he was in the area. Correct call made, no grounding. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Now Rodgers. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant you the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Here's J.K. Scott now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. It'll be called just a 22-yard punt. Certainly not what he wanted. And the Bears take over. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And a lot of times you talk about establishing the ground game. Probably something they need to do more of here losing in the second quarter. When you're riding your best horse, you've got to lather him up. The best running backs I've ever talked to, they've all said the exact same thing to me. I'll even break a good sweat until I get to 20 carries. You're full of good wisdom. Let's see if they can get him into the game more now. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. So two minutes to go in a wild first half. We're back to Soldier Field following this short break. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Right, right, right. 
from the shotgun now. Here's an inside give to the 40 and no further. So the razzle-dazzle didn't get him much. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short. So it'll be third and about the length of the football. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes Ty Montgomery and the rest of his offensive mates to take over. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man. And each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other. And they just locked people down. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. The first carry now for the BYU man. It's Jamal Williams. Now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. The Packers on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and 16. Back to the ground. This time Montgomery. And he'll lose yardage on this one. Back to the 13. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's J.K. Scott now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jordan Howard and the Bears offense making their way back out there. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. A good pick up there, a 22. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. To back good plays have them on the move on first down from the shotgun now here's an inside give and he will cross the 30 down to the 29 yard line now a timeout signaled for and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, this from 46. And Parkey's kick is good. 
And that'll bring them back within four. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and ten. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've come to halftime here with the visiting Packers out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal Week 15. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. And our game has been Aaron Rodgers, who is on target in the first half. His guys have the lead on the road at Soldier Field as we get you back to the Windy City and Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? Now Aaron Rodgers and the offense heading back onto the field. And it was somewhat of a strange first half. He threw three interceptions, yet you look at the scoreboard, they've got the lead. So you know what I think he did at the half? He stood up in front of the team, especially in front of the defense, and said, thank you. Appreciate what you've done. You guys have picked me up in a big way. And guess what? I'm going to get back to being who I am, which is pretty darn good. Let's go play the second half. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Draw play, Rodgers to Montgomery. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery, and he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two, and it brings up four. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. And this kick will be touched down as they spot it inside the 45-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. That, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker board? Yeah, those two. Second 
On second down, here's Trubisky. And that's incomplete. Kevin King, the former Washington Husky, there defensively. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. The Bears on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Here's Trubisky to throw. And it's complete to Martin. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to make it fourth down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. Is it head to the field now with the game this close? You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Wide open receiver complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route, it's extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't... And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Prince of Mucamara. And he'll get this one out to the 50 to the midfield stripe. Charles, whatever's going on between his ears right now, it's just not completely calculated correctly. Seven picks between last week and this week after that one. And they always say the most important part of a player is those six inches between the ears. But right now, it's all those interceptions that are going on. So whoever his trusted confidant is on the sidelines, I don't know if it's the offense coordinator, quarterback's coach, maybe the backup quarterback, that's who he needs to get with now and get himself calm. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. We have have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Nick Perry in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Trubisky will throw. And that's going to be incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. The Bears on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. Throwing here, Trubisky. And Martin's got it complete. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, 
my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw a completion. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. getting ready to go as they take the field. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. And he's got this down to the 35. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Rodgers now on first down. Open here is Allison, that's complete. And he gets it down to the 32. The completion good for three, and it's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Rodgers handing to Montgomery. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Into the red zone, it's Rodgers. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Montgomery back to the ground. He showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. The Packers on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This time they face a third and two. Now Rodgers on the bootleg. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. 
Lance Kendricks, his first touchdown on the year. And the Packers add on to their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for. And this touchdown will count. And Crosby puts it through, and that'll make this a seven-point game. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. This is taken at his four. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer? And my goodness, another interception. Picked up by Kyler Fackrell, the linebacker. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used the calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it, and sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him with contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him with contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about Toe that. Toe <laughs> Super Here's second and ten now from about the 32. Rodgers again here on second and ten. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Adams. And down inside the 15 he goes. He got 18 yards out of that one and it gets him a new set of downs. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. And he is caught at the seven-yard line. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another nice game. 13 yards that time and another first down. Well, he does have one touchdown in the game already. And while this one won't go for six, it's enough to get him first and goal. But you and I both know he's going to be a little upset he didn't cross the goal line for a second time in this one. Might want the ball here on the next play. They'll run for it with Montgomery. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And that loss of yards there is not just on him. It's on the guys blocking for him. I mean, they're supposed to create some type of space or at least get a stalemate. They end up letting them through, and they ended up tackling him for a loss. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there. And it also brings up third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense. Countered it with extra linebackers. It brought a little bit of speed and heft. 
and able to really make a big time play for their defense. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Here's Rodgers. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Crosby puts it through. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. They had a good effort on the return there. Gets them across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Bears offense led by Mitch Trubisky heading back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? It sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. On first down, Trubisky over the middle complete. It's Burton. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes. You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Trubisky, draw play, gives to Howard. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Good run by Jordan Howard, and now another first and ten. Now Trubisky on first down. This complete to Martin. And a juke this time. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college. With all the spread offenses, not very many pro style, where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it, but aren't necessarily that position. Trubisky now. A perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. Delay of game 
offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Out of the gun, Trubisky. That is caught inside the five. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A good pick up there, a 22. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. and goal and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game try to punch it in with Howard and he's into the end zone touchdown Bears Jordan Howard his third touchdown now on the year and the Bears draw a bit closer I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Now parking for the extra point. Parky adds the extra point, and now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. A drive that time of six plays. And finishing it off with a touchdown run was Jordan Howard. Here's Parkey now set to kick it away. Jackson now to return. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. Go, hey, Some go, good on. games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Danny Trevathan there to bring him down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Prince Alukamara. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. The Bears offense making their way out as we give you a look at the playoff race in the NFC. And it's right about this time of year you start to say this is when the cream rises to the top. Week 15, three weeks left to go, but still plenty to be determined. And I think for most teams, the obvious is to try and be the number one or number two seed. But when you look at it across the league and throughout the history of trying to get to the Super Bowl, the teams you really fear are the ones that get hot and sometimes sneak in at a five or a six seed because we've seen those teams actually get to the Super Bowl and occasionally win it. Yeah, you think of the Giants a couple of times. Steelers have done it. You're right. It has happened and will happen more in the future, I'm sure. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Here's Trubisky. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Up, 
They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Burton. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Now it's Trubisky. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Trubisky fighting the former Eagle Burton for the Chicago first. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Trubisky will come up here first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A very solid gain of 27. It's been all passing all the time on this drive. Five for five, and now first and goal. Feels like a case of until they stop us, we might as well keep running the offense that we like to run. Don't change up and do something different just because you think you need to. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Now Trubisky to throw. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Trey Burton with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Bears have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So from three scores down, these guys have fought all the way back to grab the lead. And I'll just tell people what happened when they went up three scores. I wrote on your paper two words, game over, and now I'm eating those words. I, I was wrong. <laughs> a little salt, a little pepper yeah, goes hey, down pretty easily. I will admit when I make a mistake. Well, it looked like it was going that way. This is one of those paging Frank Reich moments. I can't believe I just brought that up because Frank Reich at Maryland in college did it to my Tennessee Volunteers, and that was a big reason why my team lost. Sounds like you still harbor some pain from that game. You know, we, we still got a little time to work it out with the doctor. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. Williams to return. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any off. And now here's another interception. Picked up by Kyle Fuller. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now. That's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost that the game believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game? Well, they've said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. Onto the field now come the Bears. Now, these guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say let's be aggressive and go after him. After the interception, here's Trubisky. And he rifles one incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Here's second and ten now from the 35. Watch 80. Watch 80. Got three. Got three. 
They go play action. Trubisky. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. The catch made by Miller. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. He gets this down to the three, but no further. Brought the power run out of the bag and got a couple extra yards with it. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Three touchdown passes now for Mitchell Trubisky. And the Bears will add on to their lead. That's almost just not right. You cover everybody, but those tight ends, they can be awfully reliable. Very reliable. It, the defense just has to hate those guys. It just drives them crazy because oftentimes you can't match up with them. They have either with size, speed, or maybe even just strength. Now Parkey for the extra point. Parkey with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. Williams now on the return. And he'll make it across the 20, as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. That's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors, yet still play perfect football. That's complete to Cobb. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. A gain of six there on first. Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sideline? Do you see the coaches signaling? All the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. The Packers on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And Adams has it. Good play. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Rodgers finding Adams for a Packer first. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Go ahead, let's go. Come on. Rodgers now on first down. And my goodness, another interception. Picked up by Kyle Fuller. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. What was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's then right. Then with the Eagles. That's right. He's then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. 
The Bears offense making their way out as we give you a look at the playoff race in the NFC. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. Completion left side to Miller. That throw good for four. It's second down. on that last completion so that sets up second and six they'll run it now out of the gun down to the 30 after a gain of three bottom line they want to keep this clock rolling so they'll take that one right there they just want to keep falling forward and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home the Bears on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. Here it's third and three. Play action. Now Trubisky. Finding Gabriel complete. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. They go play action here on first down. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Trey Burton with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Bears will extend their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Parkey adds the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. A drive there of just four plays, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. Williams to return. And an excellent return there as he's up to the 35, but make it the 40-yard line. At some point, we're going to get it through our heads. Special teams, special teams, special teams. The spark that often wins games. Aaron Rodgers, he's getting ready to go again here on offense. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. And able to rip off. Off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A good pick up there, a 22. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first down, Rodgers. Buying time to his left. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into some windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. He's 
Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Let's go, let's go, come on. On second down, here's Rodgers. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. And that is incomplete. It was Bryce Callahan jarring the ball free defensively. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't matter. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. All right? And sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. They'll run it now out of the gun. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. And that's a nice game by him on first down, picking up some key yardage. But Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Bears, the final two weeks are going to tell the story for them as they move to 9-5 and five with a win. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, for the Packers, the loss might knock them out of playoff contention as they drop to 6-8. and eight. And they'll try and turn things around next week as they have a date at MetLife Stadium with the New York Jets. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.